Shalom Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. We have breaking news yet once again, InfoResist.org. This is not a pro-Russian site by no means. Uh, they are resisting Russia being there, but they're only writing in the Russian language. Of course, Ukrainian and Russian languages are somewhat similar. Uh, pretty much uh, like it is in most countries in the eastern part of the European region there. You are looking right here on your screen what you're seeing written in the Russian language. Says the general staff, the Russian troops have deployed in combat formation on the border of Crimea. Guys, this is exactly what we were showing you. And this is, they're showing it now here on Info Resist. Uh, in this paragraph, what you're looking at right here, it's speaking about how that the Russian troops have came in. They came in on the August the, uh, uh, August the 8th, I believe, is what they report in here. Uh, they're not showing that there, but anyway, they're showing that they're, uh, they're bringing in howitzers, uh, the 122 millimeter howitzers. Uh, they've been coming in with that. That, by the way, guys, are the Ukrainian, uh, Ukrainian soldiers that brought in the 122 millimeter uh, uh, howitzers that fire off that, but they're claiming that Russia has done the same. Uh, they, they're speaking about how the Russian is digging in on the trenches, etc., getting ready for war. Now, let me tell you something. If Russia is moving in and digging in, that doesn't look too much like an offensive attack to me, but rather a defensive posture. They're about 14 kilometers on the inside of the borders. They do show on the map. They've noticed that they're in two positions on the Crimean border, and that happens to be where two major roads come into Crimea, the peninsula of Crimea. So yes, Russia concerned very much that there is a planned attack on Crimea to take it back. Remember, last night's news, we reminded you what we showed you back in March. How that, what was it? NATO claimed to have Petro Poroshenko's back with, if he would do an alliance with Turkey, they met him and President Erdogan about taking back Crimea. So Russia, I wouldn't trust Erdogan as far as you could throw him. Think about it, guys, there. Uh, and we showed it, shared again how that they had been making that plot, making that plan. And now we're seeing that the news is coming out on Info Resist saying that Russia is digging in. They are there. But what got all this started in the first place, guys? Remember this video here I shared with you. This here is where uh, NATO-backed Ukrainian forces were sending in tanks on the front line of Donetsk. All right, now Russia, in response, this was on July the 8th. We broke this news. We brought this video to your attention from, from uh, the frontline uh, news report there. This is the pro-Russian uh, separatists that are in the eastern part of Ukraine. They, they keep up to date what's happening, just like NATO is saying all this, their, their things they're saying about how that uh, all these guys here are launching attacks and using illegal weapons. Well, guys, I hate to, to break it to you, but it happens to be, even according to the OSCE, the humanitarian uh, rights group say that where the pregnant woman was killed along with three other civilians, it was done from the direction of the, guess what, Ukraine-controlled side, Petro Poroshenko's side. And it is known, uh, according to Russell uh, Bentley, who is there in the region, they're fighting alongside of his own people there. He's a Texan who is there helping his people that, yes, indeed, guess what? They are firing illegal 122 millimeter shells into the Ukrainian citizens in the eastern part of Ukraine. And we show you how Brian, who, uh, who's with the, uh, what is it, the vertical, comes out absolutely misrepresents the UN findings where it speaks about the East Ukraine citizens that have been murdered at the highest number ever, ever killed by what? The Western Ukraine Petro Poroshenko backed government. But what does Mr. Brian do in his uh, interview there? He kind of twists the way the report sounds and makes it look like it's Western Ukraine's dying and it's those civilians. So who started it all? Again, it is the Ukrainian side. And believe me, when people try to tell you that Russia was the one that moved in, that's a complete lie, guys. It was not, Russia did not move in on Ukraine to start with. It was a coup, an internal coup. Russia would have never done a coup when he already had a president that was very pro-Russian. 
but that president refused to go along with this EU plan of becoming a member with the EU. He did want to do the EU plan, but he also wanted to have economic uh, agreement with Russia. And when he refused to do that, CIA moved in and they did a, a, a coup, overthrew the government, installed their own little puppet, Petro Poroshenko, as the president, and it's been a neo-Nazi campaign, a genocide against the Russian-speaking people in the East Ukraine ever since then. So what did Putin do? Because he does have a naval base. He's paid for the right to have his naval base with 20,000 soldiers there in Crimea. When this coup happened, he had to make action quick to protect his military asset. The United States would have done the exact same thing. You don't see the United States moving out of Turkey just because of failed coup attempt there, do you? No, you don't. All right, so this is what happened, and this is what got it all started. So now we're in a situation where Russia has moved in. But you know what? Mainstream media is only going to show you Russia moving in. They're never going to show you what I just showed you here. Look at all these Ukrainian flags there. This isn't 2014. This happened on August the 8th of 2016. Excuse me, July the 8th of 2016. That's when they moved in. That's when Russia, they were trying to get Russia to launch an attack. Russia didn't. Russia, though, and we reported it, first ones to bring it out, Russia did bring sent tanks in. They sent in about a dozen tanks to help the people of East Ukraine, but he didn't send in his own forces. But I'm not going to sit here and just protect Putin. I have to tell you the truth. Yes, Putin has sent in his forces. He did it during 2014 when he sees his people taking a beating. He has done it. And has he moved forces to the northern Crimean border? Well, we were the first ones to show you that as well. We showed you the footage, train loads of these things going to the front line. So, yes, he is doing it. You want to see it? I'll be glad to show it to you again. This is exactly what Putin did. We broke this one right here. This was when it was on the train still in Russia, headed to Crimea. All these tanks, these are armored personnel carriers. Yes, there is the, the grad launcher. So you are right, Ukraine. They did send a grad launcher too. But I also showed where you sent about five grad launchers down to the border with Crimea and Russia anticipating. And those little per cars there, I'm sure they got Russian troops in there that are going to man all this equipment, just like we showed you in the video yesterday. So no, we're not covering up what Russia's doing. We're showing you both sides of the fight and what's going on. It's getting serious and it's getting late, guys. I tell you, pray for these people. These are human beings that will die in this war, not just the soldiers, but as it's been going with, with Western Ukraine under Petro Poroshenko, they've been killing the civilians as well. And the UN has even said it is dangerous, and neither side has taken that into consideration. Well, I've seen video after video after video where the people in Ukraine where the civilians are dying are begging NATO to get their warmongers to back off but they're not going to do it, guys. I'm very sorry to tell you that, but they're just not going to do it. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom.